Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Oh, the steps are kind of wet. Good morning, flower friends. I say good morning. I don't know what time you're watching this, but um, it's a little after six and I have to harvest flowers today because guess what? Another day with rain. I know some of you guys are in a drastic drought and that's awful. We are in the opposite. We are getting rain almost every day. And today they're forecasting some possible severe thunderstorms starting around between 10 and 11. So um, I've got some clean buckets and the fog is just starting to lift. What a beautiful morning. I love fog. It just reminds me of when I was a kid, I used to think that I was gonna get lost in it. I literally thought I was getting lost in the fog. And it's, it's great. So, so check this out. It's my first aster that I harvested. Now, I thought this was the Valkyrie mix seed and uh, I posted it on socials and a couple people were like, that kind of looks like a tower aster. And I'm like, wait a second, you're right. It does look like a tower aster. And uh, I think it might've been just a seed mix up because the rest of the asters that are opening up looks more like a Valkyrie aster. The, the Valkyrie aster has like almost like pins and needles for petals. Really thin, really beautiful. I love it, I don't care who it is. It's an aster. I definitely need to start more asters for next year. Definitely more asters. I think I only have about 40 of them. And I mean, they're putting off, I mean, this one has like five other stems on the plant. So they're, you know, they're productive, but this is nice. Look how it's, it's big and beautiful. <laughs> She's big and beautiful, aren't we all? Let's go harvest. Oh my gosh. Oh, okay. My legs hurt. Oh, different workout yesterday. Ah. I could probably pick off this annual flax patch for a couple of hours, but I just want to get a bucket full. I think I'm going to host a bouquet bar tomorrow. I also have um, a new place where I'm going to be selling my flowers, which is exciting. I'll tell you guys about that soon. Um, but I want to move on because I only have so many hours here. And I would say that harvesting is the most time consuming, the most time consuming of all of the jobs here on the farm. It takes so long just to fill buckets. And if you're doing it by yourself, obviously that's gonna take longer. The more arms and the more clippers you have helping you, the quicker it takes, obviously. But it's just me and the, the bugs are out this morning. My gosh, the bugs are out every day. Look at that, look at that. This is an Irish eyes Rubecchia, and I'm so happy that it's starting to bloom. I wouldn't wait until it was fully open like this normally. I would, I would harvest it when it's starting to open. Even I've harvested it at this stage, um, but it is what it is. It's been raining, and this is the first time I've been able to get out here. Look at that. Wow.
Now for stem length, I'm sacrificing these two side buds for one bud. Good morning, motorcycle. Sometimes you just have to sacrifice in order to get the stem length that you need. Go, I'm gonna let that one sit another day. I think I'm gonna let this one sit because there are one, two, three, four bees uh, who decided to sleep there last night. So I'm gonna let that one hang out for a while. I also have some Saharas that are getting ready. Sahara Rebecca, um, they're like the last ones here to, to put up any stems. So I'm excited to see those. And this, this is the rustic patch. And this was the first to bloom. And it's, I hopefully, just gonna keep blooming all summer for me. Fingers crossed. Lots and lots and lots of buds. Snapdragons behind me are looking pretty amazing. So are these though. <laughs> this stock is a cool flower and it's usually all done by now, but uh, a lot of mine is just keep, it's going, it just keeps going. And uh, the stems aren't maybe as tall as they were earlier in the season, but Hey, I'll take them. Check out this variety. I actually don't remember what it's called. I'm gonna have to look it up, <laughs> but uh, it's new to me this year. Whoops, I'm all blurry. I think it's so cool. I don't remember what it's called. I'm gonna have to look it up, but I'm using it as an example. Normally I would harvest snapdragons like this, but uh, I haven't had any bouquet bars in a few days and some of them have gotten to this stage, which is still totally fine, especially for a bouquet bar where people don't understand, oh, these flowers are gonna get big and beautiful. They like to see it. And I'm stripping all of the leaves as I harvest. And I just leave the leaves, leave the leaves <laughs> in the laneways. So you might notice that I'm getting bit up, but you might not notice that. But what you might notice is I don't have netting on my snapdragons and people are like, oh, why don't you have netting? Well, I could put netting but it's equal parts lazy, equal parts, it's a pain in the butt to harvest when there's netting and it's a pain in the butt to clean up at the end of the year. It's, it's really a mess. So I didn't use netting on anything this year and 98% of my snapdragons come out like this. Every once in a while, especially after a hard rain, one will fall over <laughs> and it'll look like an L. Um, that's okay. Some people like it. <laughs> Actually, I could use that as a short one. But anyway, I, I could. Most people do. I haven't netted anything this year. Uh, simply because at the end of the year last year, I got so frustrated with trying to clean up the netting because I used Hortanova netting. Nothing. I, you know what? If you plant things close enough together, sometimes you can get away with not using netting. So this is actually 
the aster section and this is a Valkyrie aster. See the difference between the petals and the one that I showed you earlier? That is stunning and actually, <laughs> if I'm being completely honest, this plant is dead. It's been dead, um, but it's still kicking because I haven't pulled it out. So what happened in my aster patch is I had a vole go through and eat the roots. So I had some plants, like if I pan down, you can see the leaves, like look at that. Basically, that plant, the roots have all been eaten and it's dying, but it was so close to blooming that I said, well, what if I just leave it and see if it actually opens up? Now, if I were to lift on this plant, it would come out without any effort at all because the roots have been eaten. I'll show you um, another one. This, this is an aster that I pulled out the other day. It literally just eats it at the bottom. Um, I'm probably gonna pull this right now. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to pull. My full view from top to bottom. There's a sparkling water from the other day. <laughs> Sometimes I leave those out in the garden too. Ready? Oh, <laughs> it's been eaten. Oh. <laughs> but that's okay. I let it go long enough to get that beautiful bloom and I'm just going to um, take off all these side shoots and I don't see any other vole damage so far. This is the fourth one though that is eaten. So I'm gonna trim the bottom there, get that nastiness off. Now, I've never grown asters before. This is my first year, and uh, this kind anyway. And uh, <laughs> it says to open or to cut when it's halfway open. So I think that's pretty much halfway open. It's really cool. Here is my bucket and here is my basil. This will be basil in the bucket. A lot of people wait till it's flowering. I really don't care. I just want it for the smell. I cut it down low. You see this? I take everything off except for the very top. That's all you need. That's all you need. And uh, it will grow more from where you cut it. Tarnish plant bug, go away. You guys remember the basil I showed you in the tour the other day? Here's some nut grass. Ah! Um, those plants down there will get just like this. This is a succession planting. So this was the first succession. Clearly, they are beautiful and ready to go. And then those ones down there are still small. They're still eight to 10, some are 14 inches tall, and they're just starting to branch out and be beautiful. Sometimes it's hard to strip. This is my favorite plant to strip though because it smells like fruity pebbles. I always overpick my basil for a bouquet bar or um, an event like that because it's not something that I can just run into the field and cut because I like to hydrate it for at least a day so that I know it's not going to wilt in the vase. Basil's finicky. You can cut 30 stems and 20 of them are gonna be okay, but 10 of them are gonna go limp in the vase. Now, I don't actually, I have been, not been experiencing that this year. I think harvesting early in the morning and stripping the majority of the leaves off is really helping. Also, don't put basil in the cooler. It does not like to be cold. This is pink Chinese forget-me-not, and I only have about 15 of these plants. Uh, they <laughs> are absolutely gorgeous, I love them. I actually forgot to start my blue ones. Oops, okay. Now I'm over by the Bells of Ireland, but I must mention that while harvesting, it's important that you stay hydrated. Oh, sorry. 
my battery died and I had to go get a new one. But this is a really weedy section of the farm where I direct seeded some stuff. I've got one row of bachelor buttons. I have a row in the middle of nigella. And then I have the agrostemma on the side, which is a beautiful white bloom. Um, but I just screamed <laughs> because I have nigella. Uh, it's the first that I've seen. I actually have two of them in here. Um, something is eating them. I found this lying on the ground and something chopped the stem off. I mean, it's still gorgeous. My phone's ringing. I gotta get it. Hi, babe. Now, I kind of said that I was gonna not grow bachelor buttons anymore because it was a pain to harvest. But then I started to realize that I just didn't know how to harvest. So it's so much easier when you just, just go down and don't even care where you're cutting. Don't worry about the side buds and just cut to get a long enough stem. I mean, sometimes you have to go to the bottom of the plant. Look how many side buds I'm sacrificing. But guess what? In order to get a usable stem, you need to sacrifice all of those side buds. I mean, that's just what I have to do. Otherwise, I'm not gonna grow bachelor buttons because they're a pain in the butt to harvest. few sprigs of bupleurum. There's probably eight stems here and uh, that's usually good for a bouquet bar because not everyone um, understands how amazing filler is and I try to explain that to people but not everybody gets it. A lot of times I put greenery and filler out and people aren't just, they're not attracted to it. So sometimes I'll be like, oh, why don't you try adding this and I'll take a stem of bupleurum and I'll add it into their bouquet and they'll be like, wow. It's not something that people normally choose themselves. You kind of have to show them. I also have to cut off my lavender plant. Cause, oh, so sorry. There's a beautiful bee. So sorry. You don't mind, do you? You don't mind if I come in here too, do you? The bees love it. Oh my goodness, it's so good. I'll leave the rest for the bees. So you guys remember when I sprinkled wildflower seed in this um, just area? A lot of the milkweed's coming up and I just let it come up because, I mean, there's caterpillars on it already from the monarch butterflies. And also what's blooming in here is the baby's breath. So I can cut this and use this or I could just let it be part of the wildflower field. And I think I'll do a little bit of both because um, there's a lot of it here and it's up and down, probably a 100 foot stretch. So I'm probably gonna get in here and clip little pieces of it to use. Um, it's so romantic, beautiful. Oh my gosh, and look at that. Well, not that or that, but that. Putting that in a bouquet, man, fills it out beautifully. Now about 50% of uh, these are open here. And also some bachelor buttons are opening up in here um, as well, so that's fun. There's a few of them actually that I see right now. So I'm actually making my way down to the zinnias because I got to harvest zinnias too. So here we are at the zinnias and there are quite a few that are ready. So I'm going to go ahead and get cutting. Now I'm doing a wiggle test on the zinnias and basically you grab it about that far down and like wiggle it and if it's a sturdy stem it's ready to cut if it's not a sturdy stem well you can't really see me do that but if it's a wiggly 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 stem it's not ready to cut just a few from the red section i love it Okay, I just saw from way over here. Check out that one. That's what the cupcake zinnias are supposed to look like. And it looks like I'm finally getting the cupcake that it means. Oh, that one should not have been picked. Oh, I picked it anyway. 
<laughs> I didn't do the wiggle test on this one. Can you see me? Baby, can you see me? Wiggle, 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 wiggle. That, no, no bueno, no bueno. Sorry, I look like on the camera. This one's good. There's no wiggle. The stem is solid. This one. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Really should start music videos. Okay, shouldn't I have a nice dress on and a makeup and go cut the flowers in the field? That's not how it works. That's a dream, people. This is the queen lime section. I have queen lime, green, orange, and red, I believe. Um, beautiful, 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 beautiful. Cutting it deep, sacrificing stems for a usable length. These are gorgeous. Look at these. But may I draw your attention to this one? Zoom, focus, focus. You must push the button. This is like a brown, amazing green on the backside. The veining is just superb. I might have to put a bag over uh, one of these flowers on this plant and Wow. Look at me, turn it into Sunflower Steve. <laughs> Breeding! Oh, God. Okay, all right, seriously in pain. Okay, well, I, oh, well, you can't see me there, can ya? Okay, well, I gotta figure out what to do because I just got a message from a florist saying that they wanted to buy um, a bunch of my flowers. So I think I gotta finish harvesting here I have the scabiosa and the status that I was gonna grab. Oh my gosh, the black flies are all over the place. And then tally up what I have to see if I can do both her order and the bouquet bar. Otherwise, I'm just gonna do her order because it's like it's quite easy <laughs> to just say, here are the flowers, um, than to host like a bouquet bar like that. So, all right, I gotta figure it out. Okay. Status. I love status Now, these are some of my first stems of status. So some of them are a little on the shorter side, but man, the ones that are coming in right now, those are really looking really nice and long. There are so many bees in here. I don't even want to take them away from the bees. Hi. I want to let them have them. I think I might just let them have them. I can't do it. The bees can have them. I can't do it. So this is basically my harvest for this morning. It's been four hours. I'm starting to sweat. A lot of people say, why are you wearing a sweatshirt? Well, when I started harvesting this morning, it was 53 degrees. That's just what it was. It's probably 68 or 70 right now. I'm a little warm. But, um, so I, I actually am going to put together uh, those buckets for the florist and then uh, figure out what to do afterwards with the rest. I do have a new market. Um, so a local natural food store has asked for my flowers. So the heck was that? Chicken? I'm starving. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, figure out what I'm gonna give the florist and also figure out um, what I'm gonna eat for lunch <laughs> and edit this video together for you guys. So anyway, that's the harvest. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking around and we'll see ya. Oh, real soon. I got distracted while I was harvesting, but I got some of that wheat, guys. 
Sweet, I'm so excited to use this. Also though, I so, so the camera was turned the other way, so don't get mad at me, but I was, <laughs> the camera was turned the other way and I'm like, la da da, la da da, I just kept harvesting. And I also got these amaranth, um, this amaranth bundle for the florist. Um, let me see. Oh gosh, the baby's breath is stuck. It's stuck, it's stuck! Okay. So I took the tops off. Let me get down here. It's a struggle, it's a struggle. Okay, good. I took the tops off of some of these amaranths. Amaranths, amaranthus. And I think the florist is really gonna like them. Some of them are like, and then, I mean, awesome, right? And then check these out. These ones are more like, like little, almost like little floofy flues. And then the same thing with, with these babies, these uh, burgundy ones. Uh, it's like Hopi red dye and then the red spike amaranth. Um, yeah, I think the florist is really gonna like those. So I'm um, putting that together because they didn't say anything specific. She just said $150 worth of flowers are gonna pick up tomorrow morning. So yay. Oh my God, I'm dying. Okay, I'm good. See ya. Okay, now I want to tell you about the sponsor of today's video. It's Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators like you. They have classes on gardening, photography, and thousands more. As you guys saw this week, I'm getting more orders for custom arrangements and mason jars and vases and less hand tied bouquets. So I wanted to find something that would help me out with that. Enter Kaylee and her class on bouquet arrangements. I really love the modern styles and techniques that she used in this course. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description below will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Now go learn.